Good morning. Here it is, another day travelling minutes with mates. Today we are leaving the Nindigali pub. Uh, it's a beautiful looking morning, sun's up, a bit of a breeze. Today we're on our way to Dirrambandi, St George, and then we'll end up spending the night in Cunnamulla. So we'll have a look in, uh, around those towns and see what they have to show us as well. And when you look at the map, you'll see that Deer and Bandy is a little bit out of the way on the way to St George, because we could just go straight to St George from here, as we found out yesterday. But we've deliberately decided to go to Deer and Bandy, and we'll let you know why when we get there. It's a funny little story. Stay tuned. Before heading off, though, we decided to stretch our legs and take a walk around the Gully Walk here at Nindagully. Just south of Nindagully is the small community of Fallon. Fallon has a great war memorial park with a giant wombat and a wonderful playground and picnic area. There is also an exercise area where Scott began his outback round of workouts. From Thallon, it's a 40 minute drive west on the Thallon Nundu Road to Dirrambandi. Dirrambandi is located on the traditional lands of the Kuma people. However, people in Dirrambandi recognise themselves as Gamilaroi. It is situated on the Castle Rye Highway and on the banks of the Boulogne River, right near the state line between New South Wales and Queensland. The word Dirrambandi comes from the Uulai dialect, and there is a lot of debate around what it actually means, from broken forest country to a chorus of frogs at night. So here we are in the metropolis called Dirrambandi. <laughs> so why have we come to Dirrambandi? Many years ago, we were listening to a Lee Kernigan song called Kanamala Fella. And in that song, he talks about Dirrambandi, the town. And we thought, well, that's, where is Dirrambandi? Let's look it up on Google. So we had a look at it and we seriously thought about buying a property relocating the family to Dirrambandi without even seeing Dirrambandi for ourselves. We must have been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we've come to Dirrambandi. We were going to move here about 12 years ago, I think it was. Uh, 20 or oh, 15 years ago. And we didn't. We moved to Can to um, Armadale anyway. So that's why we're in Dirrambandi, just to have a look around and see where we would have moved to. And if any Dirrambandi people are watching this, no offence guys, I'm sure it's a lovely town. It looks like you've got a, a beautiful community spirit. Your park here is awesome. It's a really great play area for the kids. So well done on that. Um, sorry we didn't move here, but I don't think it would have suited our family. So um, yeah, but nice town, thanks. Yeah. It is a nice little town. The park is beautiful. There's a great bakery next to the park recommend you drop in there and grab yourself a bite to eat when you're passing through. To get to St George you take the Castle Ray Highway east and then north from Dirrambandi. Standing in front of this blue tree here and this is part of the Blue Tree Project. Blue Tree Project started in 2018 after an unfortunate suicide and these trees are now dotted across the Australian landscape and they are simply beacons of hope and conversation starters. So whenever you are traveling around in Outback Australia and you see a blue tree, ask yourself or your mate, how are you going? St George is on the banks of the Boulogne River. 
Most of these outback towns have exercise stations for locals and travellers. So here we are doing round two of the workout tour and this was an excellent exercise for my lower back. It's been a hot day of driving so far. So we've been to Dirrambandi as you saw. There's a great park there. We don't want to diss the town out because we didn't move there. We loved it, it looked great. It was stinking hot, but it is the middle of summer. It's January. We've just been through St George, had a quick look at the river, a quick bite to eat uh, at the Servo there. So that's quite a booming little town. The population's only 3,000. And there's a, so much going on there. It was busy, there's a lot of stores, there's a, a lot of, it looks like a lot of job opportunities. Beautiful river with a weir. So yeah, if you want to visit a place, check out St George. It's a surprising little town. We're out on the highway now. We've got a three hour drive between towns. Three hours to the next fuel stop, three hours until we stay overnight again. It's 36 degrees outside at the moment, so it's not too hot for summer in this area. Normally it's much hotter, so it's mild, but for us, that's pretty hot. We stayed in the Club Boutique Motel in town, which was a beautifully restored old building with a fantastic room and bathroom and a great beer garden which we later enjoyed all to ourselves as it was off-peak season for tourism. The famous Kalamala sand dunes are not desert dunes. They are a result of the changing course of the Warrigo River over the millennia leaving behind these sandy mounds which are important to local ecosystems and also a fun place for locals and visitors to hike and play. And then we ate at the Warrigo Hotel. had a couple of drinks at the bar and then settled into the diner for garlic bread and pizza. There are numerous things to do around Kanamala. We visited the weir on the Warrego River, which was overflowing, as well as the Bushlands Walk, which showcases the ecosystems of birds and other wildlife which depend on the various native trees of the region. Kanamala is a town in Queensland's outback situated on the banks of the Warrego River. It's 750 k's west of the state capital Brisbane and is the home of the Kunya people. The name Kanamala comes from the Kunya word meaning a long water hole. So the Kanamala fella uh, statue here has been immortalised in, in a number of songs by different artists, more recently by Lee Kernigan. European settlement began here in the 1860s as a stop for travellers on the Cobb & Co Coaches, a prominent horse-drawn coach company in Australia during the 1800s. Kunnamulla was an important junction not only for the coaches but also an intersection of two stock routes, one running north and south and the other east and west. 
Today, the town continues as a rural community in cattle country. A great information centre boasts a well-presented museum and time tunnel presentation about the Great Artesian Basin. We also took a stroll along the Warrigo River Walk on the western banks of the river. So Scott and I were just reading that sign back there and saying that we haven't actually seen any red kangaroos in the wild in our whole 50 plus years of existence. But apparently we might have seen one because it said that the female red kangaroos are actually a bluish, greyish colour. And we have seen a couple of those along the way. So maybe we have, but that's something you learn something every day. There you go. So for the rest of the morning in Kan Kanamala, we went to the wildlife sanctuary. Unfortunately, they were uh, closed. Uh, there is a sealed road all the way out to the wildlife sanctuary. Uh, so then we turned around. We came out to the Warrigo River Walk. It's heating up. It's 36 degrees already at what, 10 a.m. this morning. 37 now. <laughs> 37. Um, it's a nice little walk. Uh, there's not a great deal around the river itself, but when you do get down to the river, it's really nice. So we're now on our way to Thargaminda, and we'll see you there in the next episode.